The MCU has been wowing us with post-credit scenes since its beginning, and it's gotten to the point where like 90% of the audience knows to stick around after the movie's over. For the other 10%, how do you not know at this point? Anyways, some post-credit scenes are more important than others, but which ones are the most impactful in the long run? Well, that's what I'm here today to discuss, so let's get started right now. Yay us. Pat, pat on the back. Pat on the back. Come on. This is a list of most impactful post credit scenes, so although the more jokey ones are sometimes hilarious, they're not really impactful, right? Things like the giant ants playing the drums, the Grandmaster trying to save his own skin, or like most anything in Guardians of the Galaxy movies aren't supposed to set up a lot for the future, but rather just give us a bit of a laugh. Though sometimes I think humor works against our expectations. Like in Iron Man 3, when it was revealed that Tony was talking to a sleeping Bruce kind of felt like a letdown given what what was rumored to have happened. And then of course, there's the legendary Captain America PSA that talked about the value of patience. All these provide a laugh, but weren't deep down we all expecting something a bit more? The Spider-Man Homecoming post-credit could have been teasing something big, but it feels like those plans were shifted to the side once the multiverse shenanigans started happening. The scene saw the recently imprisoned Adrian Toomes meet up with Matt Gargan and the two discuss a potential team in order to get revenge on Spidey. Well, that feels more like Gargan's pitch while Toomes is happy to keep Peter's identity secret for now. But while this feels like blatant sequel setup that would see Gargan become the Scorpion that changed after Peter Parker got swept up in the biggest movie event since Endgame. I mean, after the craziness of No Way Home and fighting Alfred Molina's Doc Ock, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and Jamie Foxx's Electro, this Scorpion tease feels like small potatoes, right? The ending of Ant-Man saw Hank Pym reveal to his daughter Hope her Wasp superhero costume, to which she says it's about dang time. But really, I think this moment is a bit undercut by the fact that Hope should have definitely had had her costume much earlier than this. So calling attention to the fact that it's been a long time coming doesn't have the desired effect the scene was going for. Like, I get it. The first movie is called Just Ant-Man, and you need to keep your focus on Scott Lang's journey to become a superhero before opening the world in the second one. But Hope proved herself as the superior fighter and strategist throughout the film, and her only flaw was the bitterness she felt toward her dad. But like, everything would have gone much more smoothly if she had her Wasp outfit from the start. Ah, uh, remember the early days of the MCU when we were still getting used to this whole formula and it was a simple method of having the post credit scene directly tease the next film in the franchise? Nowadays, when we see a post credit scene, we have to wait years and multiple movies for some type of resolution as the MCU branches out in 14 million different directions. But let's remember when things were a bit easier. Back in Iron Man 2, the post credit scene had a fantastic reveal regarding Thor's hammer, which set the stage for Thor to make his grand introduction in the MCU. It's straightforward, incredibly exciting, and sets the stage for a greater cosmic presence in the MCU after the two Iron Mans and the Incredible Hulk. Plus, this was back in a time where a lot of people might not have known a Thor movie was coming, so just imagine the excitement of seeing Mjolnir in live action for the first time. There'll be a few entries on here that we have to wait and see how impactful they are in the long run, but on the surface, they seem pretty impactful now, you know what I mean? It's why they're placed sort of low on this list. At the end of Shang-Chi, when Xia Ling goes to dismantle the Ten Rings organization, there's a bit of a swerve when it turns out she actually takes control of it to push it in a new direction. Are her intentions sinister? What is she after? Will this lead to the Ten Rings and the newly freed Black Widows joining forces to work with the Power Broker in order to achieve power, wealth, and world influence? It's tough to say, but it's exciting to speculate on, don't you think? Plus, with Xia Ling being more on the potentially evil side, how will that affect her relationship with her super hero brother. That's the juicy drama I want to see more of. See, here's another entry where we don't quite know how impactful it will be yet, but it seems like it could lead to big things down the line. The Eternals post credit scene introduced Eros, the brother of Thanos, played by Harry Styles, and he wanted to help lead our heroes to where the other Eternals were. Now, this character's introduction does two things for the MCU. It sets up a fascinating character dynamic with the other Eternals, as well as opens up the past by giving us a new outlook to understand Thanos. Presumably, Eros knows Thanos more than anyone, and it will be interesting to see what the party-loving hunk has to say about his giant purple brother. The Eternals movie didn't dive into the whole Titan-Eternals connection, but now with Eros around, the sequel could expand on that more. 
When Black Widow's prequel movie was released, there were questions going into it regarding what the future held for Yelena, who was poised to take over the Black Widow mantle from Natasha. But as the credits started to roll, it wasn't quite clear what the vest-loving Yelena would do next. Would she try to join the Avengers? Would she lead the new Black Widows? Turns out, neither were correct. The post credit scene set up her next character arc as it was revealed she was working for Valentina Allegra de Fontaine and being fed misinformation regarding what exactly happened to her sister. Then Val unleashes her on Hawkeye, successfully setting up a confrontation in the Hawkeye TV show. On a character level, this was kind of disappointing since we knew Yelena was being lied to, but on a synergy level between the movies and the TV shows, it was kind of a brilliant move. You see the Black Widow movie, then are basically pointed toward the Hawkeye Hawkeye TV show. And who cares about character when you have a successful billion dollar franchise that tells you what to watch next, right? Adam Warlock is a popular comic character that should have had a big role in the whole Infinity Saga, but there was never a way to fit him in logically. His history is so tied up with the Infinity Stones and Thanos, so it will be interesting to see where his story goes now that he's being brought in post-Thanos. The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 credits were wild in that they were stuffed with not one, not two, but five extra scenes. Some of them were just for fun and others set up Volume 3. The biggest was Aisha revealing that she had built a perfect specimen and would call him Adam. Of course, this was Adam Warlock, and with the character by the sounds of it having a major part in Volume 3, this was certainly an important and impactful scene. But come on! Remember when that movie first came out and immediately after there was Adam Warlock casting speculation? If you had told people four years ago that the kid from Were the Millers was Adam Warlock, I think there would have been a major backlash. But now, it kind of fits. Coming off the heels of the game-changing Far From Home mid-credit scene that I'll discuss in a bit was a post-credit scene that effectively set up Nick Fury's role in Earth's defenses for the new era. If Nick Fury and Maria Hill acted a bit off throughout the movie, it's because they were actually scrolls in disguise, who Fury had sent in his place while he worked on a new space base. At the time, this was hinting at the S.W.O.R.D. organization, but with S.W.O.R.D. also being basically the villains of WandaVision, who knows how things will progress. But this is impactful because it shows Fury setting up a space defense base, which makes sense after the whole Thanos thing. We'll presumably see more of this in the Secret Invasion TV show, but do you think the new space base was able to detect a giant celestial appearing around Earth and stealing away the Eternals? I mean, I would hope so, right? Speaking of the Eternals, the other post credit scene of the Eternals movie saw Dane Whitman contemplating grabbing the Ebony Blade and accepting his destiny as a superhero. Now, just by itself, this scene is alright after a whole movie of shoehorned exposition regarding his backstory, but it gets really interesting when none other than Blade the Vampire Hunter stops Dane from grabbing it, hitting at a team up between the two. This feels like the MCU is setting up a slightly darker Avengers style team consisting of lower ranked heroes like Blade, the Black Knight, and could include people like Moon Knight. If this was a tease for something like that, then color me intrigued. Up until the post credit scene of the Winter Soldier, things tended to be relatively grounded in terms of abilities. Like, even Thor had spelled out that what humans believed to be magic was actually just a form of science to the Asgardians. But that all changed with the introduction of the Maximoff twins. As Baron Von Strucker said, it was a new age of miracles with Wanda and Pietro's introduction. But that's only because he wasn't legally allowed to say the word mutants. But it's kind of crazy to think that this introduction laid the groundwork for all the mystical stuff that has been front and center in this current phase of the MCU. Although Quicksilver didn't live up to his potential, Wanda is now one of the main faces of this franchise, so her introduction in this post credit scene was hugely impactful. Is there an item that's more important to the MCU than the Tesseract? This was the MacGuffin for Captain America the First Avenger, the Avengers, and Captain Marvel, while also being vital to Loki's entire story, with it arguably being the reason that Thanos attacked Thor's people at the start of Infinity War, as well as leading Loki off into his own spin-off TV show. So yeah, the Tesseract is super important, which is why the first post credit scene where we see it is so cool. We spot it at the end of Thor, and it not only promises big things to come, but also confirms that Loki is alive after his final battle with Thor. That's a fun little added bonus to a post credit scene that lays the foundation for like all the major conflicts in the next few movies. 
Infinity War ended with the shocking cliffhanger of all our heroes losing the big battle against Thanos. Half the universe was snapped away and we were left clutching our popcorn buckets as we hoped a post credit scene would give us some type of clue as to how our heroes would fight back and reverse this devastating loss. Well, we needed to call in some big guns. The post credit scene saw Nick Fury take out an old school pager and hit the call button right before he turns to dust like half the universe. On it, we see Captain Marvel's insignia and then and cut to black. This made it seem like Captain Marvel was going to be the key to saving everyone and be vital in the final fight in Endgame. And while yes, she did rescue Tony Stark and was clutch in that final battle, she wasn't really as important to the story as the Infinity War post credit scene would have you believe. But it's still a jaw-dropping moment. Wakanda is so ingrained in pop culture now, but think back to Civil War's post credit scene. We knew a Black Panther movie was coming, but had no idea how the MCU would bring the technologically advanced nation to life. So it was amazing to see the giant panther statue for the very first time. With Steve hiding Bucky in Wakanda while he heals, the tone that T'Challa takes in saying that the world can try coming for the Winter Soldier but won't succeed hints at how powerful Wakanda could be. And knowing everything we do now about the nation and its technology, this is a wonderful first tease. It's still unclear what exactly this current era of the MCU is building toward now that Thanos is gone. It seems like they're throwing a bunch of stuff out there and seeing what sticks. Sure, I know there's a general plan, but I think it depends on how certain projects are received. And with the thunderous positive reception Shang-Chi got, I think its first post credit scene will be a significant cornerstone for the next big thing. In it, Shang-Chi and Katie are welcomed to the Avengers, and told that the rings that Shang-Chi just obtained have released a signal to something mysterious and super old. It's a great way to expand on the ring's history and opens the door for even greater ancient threats we've never seen before. Plus, it's impactful because we got to see Wong sing karaoke. That's huge right there. I've always found it sort of sad how Thor Ragnarok takes place almost right before Infinity War. Thor Ragnarok basically reboots the character, fixes the fractured relationship between Thor and Loki, and sets up Thor to finally be King of Asgard after that's been his character arc since the beginning. But then Infinity War immediately ruins all of that. It starts in the post credit scene of Ragnarok. Just when Thor and Loki think they're safe, Thanos' ship appears ready to do battle. It's a direct setup for the final chapter of this Infinity Saga and finally has Thanos do more than just sit in a chair or talk a big game. Sure, we don't see the Asgardian massacre, but just the tease of Thanos' ship tells us the audience that the Mad Titan is done waiting in the shadows and is finally doing things himself after like six years. Venom Let There Be Carnage had one of the most game-changing post credit scenes of all time. Forget everything that happens in No Way Home and just think how you felt watching the Venom 2 post credit scene. I think it made all of us go, wait, so what happens now? It was so disorienting in the best way possible. What happened was Venom and Eddie seemed about to perform a mind meld that teased the history of the symbiotes and possibly a null reveal, but then everything swerved where Venom found himself staring at a TV screen with Tom Holland's Spider-Man man on it, promising a collision between the two characters. It suddenly made waiting for No Way Home's release even more difficult than it already was. For a scene with massive ramifications, this scene was top-notch. Speaking of Spider-Man, I think the truly most shocking post credit scene in the entire MCU was Far From Home. We get a few massive bombshells that change everything. First, we're shocked to see J.K. Simmons back as J. Jonah Jameson, and just as we try to wrap our minds around this potential start of the multiverse, everything blows up when it looks like Spidey is framed for Mysterio's demise. And that's already shocking enough, but then things even go one step farther by revealing Peter Parker's identity to the world. It's such a huge mic drop and immediately got all of us fans ravenous for a follow-up. That's what a good post credit scene would do. And given that the identity reveal is the basis for Peter's actions in No Way Home that in turn open up the multiverse, this is definitely a top three impactful post credit scene. Although the Far From Home post credit scene is arguably the best one, this is a list of most impactful, so it's not at the top. And one scene that I think deserves more credit is the very first Thanos reveal at the end of the Avengers. The first Avengers movie successfully proved that this experiment of separate characters coming together in a cinematic universe could work. But now what? They've formed as a team and defeated the bad guy, so what comes next? Well, that's where Thanos comes in. The post credit scene for the Avengers teases that Thanos will be the big threat that the 
the Avengers have to face next. And although it's absolutely clear that the MCU had no idea what they were doing with Thanos at that point, given his look and motivations seem completely different, it's still such a foundational post credit scene for the next two phases of the MCU. Of course, I had to end with the one that started it all. Iron Man was a risky experiment that paid off. If it had flopped or was a bad movie, who knows what the shape of superhero cinema would be right now. But not only did it fully establish Tony Stark as someone we'd watch a bunch of movies about, the post credit scene promised that this was building to something big. When Samuel L. Jackson surprises everyone by showing up and talking about the Avengers initiative, it laid the groundwork for this whole franchise. And this was back when people didn't even know to stay for the post credit scene, so imagine how many people missed it the first time. I know I did. This is the godfather of all post-credit scenes right here. 